welcome to AF Math and Engineering. If you're enjoying this video on our channel, please hit the like button and the subscribe button down below. Enjoy the video. Hey everyone, welcome back. Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. Um, this video we're going to talk about uh, deflections in concrete. In these two videos we're going to be talking about short-term deflection, uh, so immediate deflections of concrete, and then we're going to maybe in another video talk about uh, long-term deflection as well, and we're going to combine them. But for this, we're just going to talk about immediate deflection. And before we talk about immediate deflection, I'm going to show you the formula first, and then we're just going to talk about and try and conceptualize the different moment of inertias when the concrete is cracked, okay? Because that's the main kind of theme that we want to follow here. So um, typically, when we were doing really basic calculations, we just assumed that the section was non-cracked, that it was, um, you know, in earlier years of engineering. Um, that it's just a perfectly rectangular section, there's nothing wrong with it. But in reality, concrete does crack under tension, and when it cracks, it loses its flexural stiffness, and we need to take that into account when we're doing deflection calculations, um, according to the Canadian Code. So, with that being said, um, we're going to get into all that. This, so this is going to be a two-part video. First, we're going to do the uh, explanation of the moment of inertia, then we're going to do the uh, problem solving. Um, for the maximum immediate deflection. So first, yeah, let's talk about the max immediate and it doesn't have to be the max. It could be uh, any deflection, but typically we want to we want to look at the the maximum deflections because those are the ones that we're going to check against uh, the code. This is pretty much how uh, this formula comes about, and this is for a concrete member or for any simply supported member. Uh, we're just going to do simply supported here. There are other formulas for other uh, other beams configurations, but so for example, um, in the in the code book, you can get the deflection of a simply supported member uh, that, that is subjected to a uniformly distributed load. For example, we have something like this, okay? And this is subjected to some uh, uniform load W with length L. Okay, so that um, deflection is given by 5 divided by 384 times W L to the fourth over EI. So um, the bending moment at the, the mid-span of this beam, we all know that is the moment is WL squared over 8. We should all know that by now. And um, we can kind of rearrange and solve this for W. So that's going to give us 8M over L squared equals W. Okay. And what we just need to do is substitute this back in. That is going to give us um, our formula for our immediate deflection of our concrete beam, uh, which is simply supported and subjected to a uniformly distributed load. And that is simply just going to be 5 divided by 48 times ml squared over EI. Okay. Now E is E of concrete, and I is the effective moment of inertia. Okay. So... The effective moment of inertia, what's that? Before we get into the effective moment of inertia, which is this here, we're going to need to talk about first the gross and the crack moment of inertia and what they are. Okay, so um, let's take a look at the screen now, and I'm just going to put up a couple graphics and we can kind of discuss them. So first on the screen, um, we have a, a beam here. It's simply supported, subjected to a uniform load. And we have, as you can see, different regions um, of moment, right? Because moment in... in uh, uniformly distributed shape is parabolic, right? So we have the moment increasing all the way to the mid-span. So as you can see here on the on the right and the left, we have the cracking moment, okay? So the cracking moment essentially is the, the moment um, where the beam will start to crack if the beam is subjected to that moment. And then anything past that moment, it will continue to crack more and more until um, it is fully cracked. So uh, this region in between those MCRs is what we call our cracked region. And anything outside of that MCR is called our uncracked region, as you can see on the screen. Now, you see there's some sections up there on the beam, A, B, and C. Let's take a look at those. So here's sections A, B, and C. So we just, uh, A was the uncracked section, totally normal section. As we can see, we have our linear stress distribution. At the top, we have our F uh, compressive strength. At the bottom, we have our tensional strength of our concrete. And those are both acting fully on the, on the beam still because the, the beam is uncracked, okay? And as we get the onset of cracking, it's similar, same thing. Uh, the tensional force, the concrete is still contributing to the resistance. However, when we go to section CC in our crack section, we can see that the bottom of the section, so our neutral axis is this dotted line below that, um, the concrete is fully cracked. So at this point, that concrete has lost all of its flexural rigidity, and it is no longer contributing to the strength of the, of the beam. And all we have in the beam is the compression strength of the area of the concrete above the neutral axis, and we have the tensional strength of the steel, and that's it. 
So if we take a look at this one now, this, this diagram is a little bit different, but we have different sections and different moments, moments of inertia that we use for different sections. Okay, so to the right, or the left, depending on which one we look at, of the cracking moment, so the uncracked sections, those sections are considered to be fully functional. So when we looked at section AA before, um, the entire uh, cross section is contributing to the bending resistance. As a result of that, we can use the gross moment of inertia. So we can just use the sectional moment of inertia, which was BH cubed over 12. We can use that. However, for the cracked section, okay, we need to use the effective moment of inertia. And why is this? Well, the reason we need to do this is because if you take a look here, we have our bending moment and our y-axis and our mid-span deflection and our x-axis, is that as we increase our bending moment, okay, the mid-span deflection kind of exponentially starts to increase, okay, and um, the reason for this is we're losing flexural rigidity, okay, so let's look back on this page here, okay, so typically in an uncracked section, okay, uh, we're going to use the gross moment of inertia, okay, so the gross moment. Okay. We're going to use the gross moment of inertia because as we went over, um, the entire section is contributing to the uh, resistance. Okay, so we're going to say that the Ig is equal to BH cubed over 12. Okay, this is for a fully non-cracked section. Okay, this only happens when our cracking moment is larger than our maximum moment. Okay, so when our cracking moment is larger than our maximum moment, that means the moment that is subjected, uh, the beam is subjected to is is not high enough to crack the beam at the mid-span. So then that means that our none of our beam will be cracked and we can use the gross moment inertia. However, in the case where we are going to experience some cracking, so now let's look at the crack moment of inertia. Okay, The formula for the crack moment of inertia and the derivation is a little bit long. I suggest if you want to take a look at the derivation of this, you go to your um, uh, you go to your book. So this derivation here, by the way, is just for uh, beams with tension steel. So if we have compression steel, we need to add one more term. And I think you'll probably kind of notice um, this, the form of this formula, okay? And this is the parallel axis theorem. So this is our moment of inertia here. Um, and this uh, B is the base, Y here. This is the, the centroid of the transform section. Okay, so we need to take into account in the, when we're doing deflection calculations based on crack moment of inertia, we need to transform the section um, by using the modular ratio. So we have concrete and steel. They have both have different uh, modulus elasticities. So we need to convert the steel to an equivalent amount of concrete. Then we need to find uh, the, um, the neutral axis of that transform section. Okay, so when it's non-cracked, we can just use our gross area, we don't need to do the transform section, but when it is cracked, we, when we're doing deflection calculations, we need to use this special transform section. And um, the centroid of the, the transform section is going to be given by this formula here. This is the effective depth. Okay. This is the reinforcement ratio. N is the modular ratio. We'll give that in a sec. Okay, so this is the centroid. That's that Y bar. What is N? Well, N, okay, is simply just going to be where our modular ratio is just simply our modulus elasticity of steel divided by modulus elasticity of concrete, which is generally going to be in the range of about 8 to 10. So, you know, these formulas, they're easy. You know what I mean? This, this is an easy formula. And this is an easy formula to find these moment of inertia. But what we're mainly concerned about here is why we're doing this and why we need to consider cracked moment of inertia versus gross moment of inertia. And next when we do the effective, which is the last one, then we're going to combine these two and, and you're going to see why we're doing this. Um, but the idea really is, is that the flexural rigidity of your section as it cracks decreases, okay? And so the, so the, and the moment of inertia decreases. So if we have our beam here, it decreases as we get to more and more cracked sections until the section is fully cracked, like we looked at the other ones. So as, say, this is the fully cracked uh, moment here, okay? So we have M max here. We'll say this is fully cracked, and we have M C R. Okay, so as we're going towards the mid-span here, okay, our flexural rigidity, which is given by E C times I, okay, is decreasing. Okay, so as we get to M C R and we go this way, our flexural rigidity is decreasing, which means in a crack section, I is actually variable. Okay, so I is a variable and it's decreasing, and our modulus elasticity is staying the same until we get to uh, the our minimum point. Now, um, when we're trying to calculate deflections, we can't use a variable i. Um, that doesn't make sense. So we need to kind of derive some formula in order to kind of make it easier for us to do these types of calculations. And that that's what the effective moment of inertia is. So the effective moment of inertia, okay, 
is it's a reasonable approximation given by the code of uh, the actual eye. So we have you know this area here, which is our kind of gross area, uh, moment of inertia that's uncracked. Then we have this whole section in here, okay, that is uh, that is cracked, and there's different levels of cracking in that section. So um, in order to combine all those together and kind of get an eye for the entire section, we need to find IE. Okay, so IE is our effective moment of inertia. And you're going to see that IE combines ICR and IG. Okay, so IE is given by the Canadian code. It might be different in your country. It's given as ICR, so the cracking moment of inertia, plus the gross moment of inertia minus the crack moment of inertia. Okay, and that's going to be times MCR over MA cubed. This must be less than or equal to IG which makes sense. That's kind of what we talked about here. We just went over ICR. We went over IG. Okay. MCR. What is MCR? Well, MCR um, can be given by this formula here, which is FR star IG over YT. FR star is a modified modulus of rupture. It's equal to 0.5 of the modulus of rupture, or it's equal to 0 0.3 lambda root F prime C where lambda is one for normal density concrete. So we're, we're kind of lowering the modulus of rupture for deflection calculations. Uh, YT is, is essentially the centroid of the gross shape rectangle, and IG is IG. So MA is the, uh, the maximum bending moment um, at the load stage. It depends. So if we want to find, for example, uh, dead load deflection, then th this is going to be, so if we want to find dead load deflection, we're going to use MD. If we want to find live load deflection, we want to use ML. And if we want to do a combine, then we combine uh, both the dead load and live load deflections. So sometimes the code will ask for maximum live load deflection, for example. Then we would use the live load moment only. So that is um, that formula there. So uh, one more thing to note about before we finish here uh, about the effective moment of inertia. The following recommendations are actually given by the code, and they're regarding IE. Okay, so one is that if the uh, if MA, okay, so the maximum bending moment acting on the beam, um, is significantly larger than MCR. So for example, if MA over MCR okay, is greater than or equal to two, then our IE is going to be very close to ICR. Okay. And what that means uh, is that when we're doing our deflection calculations, instead of using IE, uh, we're going to use ICR. So essentially what that means is that the bending moment is very, very high on the beam, and it's causing pretty much the whole beam to crack almost. So in that case, in order to be uh, conservative, we want to use the cracking moment of inertia for the entire section, which is going to be lower, give us a larger deflection. It's going to be safer. Um, and if our MA, that's case one, if our MA is less than our MCR, Okay, um, then the entire member is uh, expected to be uncracked, and that's kind of what we talked about up here. And as a result of that, we can just use IG for the entire deflection calculations. So instead of IE up here, we're going to use IG. So those are just some points. Um, I kind of wanted to do kind of like a theory video for you in this one, because I know when I took this course in school, it wasn't very well explained. So um, I hope you learned something there. I hope that kind of clarified what these different moment of inertias are. And in the next video, we're going to calculate the maximum immediate deflection on a concrete member using all of these formulas that we just uh, went over in this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for the next part. Click on the end screen here, go to the next video, and click the video and subscribe to the channel. Take care.